welcome. When, in stark contrast to the final day of most conferences that we've had, there is actually an extraordinary turnout here this morning. Uh, genius scheduling on our part, I think, to, in a lot of respects, keep the best to last. Uh, we're going to be here for a couple of hours this morning, and I'm pretty stoked about the program that we've arranged. Uh, obviously, first up, Yahtzee. Uh, after that, we've got a publisher panel, so we've got uh, three very high-level representatives from uh, uh, three great publishers. Gilk from Australian Game is going to chair that session. It will be a Q&A style panel, and hopefully we'll have the opportunity to get to the bottom of some of the, uh, some of the issues that interest us as developers, and certain issues that uh, interest you as a member of the video game media. I want to acknowledge uh, THQ as the generous sponsor of both of these sessions this morning. Thank you very much, Steve Gordon from THQ. Wasn't enough for them to walk away with pretty much all of the awards last night. <laughs> Even further profile raising this morning. Our first speaker this morning, of course, is a gentleman that needs no introduction. Uh, rather than taking the tempting option of just sitting down, having said that, I will uh, introduce him properly. Uh, he has shot to fame uh, over the course of the last couple of years with his zero punctuation reviews. I'm sure uh, everybody in this room is intimately uh, familiar with his work. Uh, it's a treat for us today, though, because this is the first time that he's actually delivered a, a long-form presentation. So you might look at the uh, zero punctuation work as something resembling travel Yahtzee and this as the real long form version of, uh, of the game and, uh, and of the man. He is a lovely fellow. He's taller in real life than you'd expect. <laughs> and he's going to regale us with his insights uh, this morning of uh, video games from a critic's perspective. Can you please welcome to the stage, Gutsy. Tom. Thank you, everyone. It, yes, it's an, it's an honor to be speaking today on the closing day of the conference. Hope you all had a good one. Made friendships to last a lifetime. Ate some, eaten a lot of free food. <laughs> this much of a uh, Sorry to disappoint, but I'm not going to be talking very fast today because I'm not at work. And uh, I didn't bring any visual aids either. So, um, because of what I have to say, I can just say. So, I figured I'd just leave the old naming lights up there, and you can all look at it and go, oh, that's what his real name is. <laughs> so, for those who don't know me, I am a game critic. About a year and a half ago, I was freshly emancipated from both girlfriend and employment, and wanted to take it out on something. <laughs> So I began a series of short video reviews with unreasonably high standards. They became popular, I signed a contract, 70 minutes <coughs> later, next thing you know, here we are. Or rather, here I am, blinking stupidly in the spotlight <laughs> under the cruel and unyielding judgmental gazes of some people I have probably <coughs> insulted at some point. <laughs> but uh, it does feel weird for me to be speaking at Game Connect, I'm given to understand my videos have a large audience of professional game developers, and it honestly astounds me that they're interested in what I have to say. I mean, um, I've been gaming since my memories begin. Philips video back, Commodore 64. <laughs> Can't get a whoop, no? <laughs> um, as a child, Games fascinated me. I used to use my drawing paper to storyboard out ideas for games. Crap ideas for games, but nevertheless. Being a game designer was like a dream. And actual professional developers were like figures of legend. Now, 20 years later, here I am, and I have to tell a room full of them how to do their jobs. I lost the place. <laughs> Not that I'm feeling on the spot. So, uh, what makes a good game? It's a pretty intimidating question, isn't it? Simple, and at the same time, bloody complicated. There's no magic formula. Everyone's got their own tastes. And every game is trying to do something different. I could go off about 
difficulty curves, emergent storytelling, diligent QA, but that's breaking down something that I think needs to be viewed as a whole. This is part of my uh, personal approach to game reviewing. First of all, I'm going to stop calling it reviewing because I'm not a reviewer. Reviewing is what you do to lawnmowers. You take them apart and you weigh up every blade and tube for maximum efficiency and then you give it marks out of 10 for how short your grass is at the end of it. And there's a tendency for game reviews to do the same sort of thing. 8 out of 10 for graphics, 6 out of 10 for sound, 10 out of 10 for the way I hit someone with the back of his head spits apart like a chocolate orange. And I think that's missing the point. It's like giving the Mona Lisa a percentage score based on how nice the frame is. I prefer to be called a critic because a criticism is what happens to art. Now, when you say that games are art, there's a tendency for people to get a bit embarrassed. Oh, here we go, they say. Look at the big nerd in his big nerdy trousers, getting all sweaty and excited about frivolous things. Well, if being passionate about something makes me a nerd, then I'd rather be that than the aloof, tedious, empty shell of a person that you are. <laughs> <laughs> Games are truly one of the most exciting industries to be working in right now. And of course, I'm passionate. I love the feeling of playing a really good one. And I equally love playing a really bad one. Because hatred is still passion. And um, the review will probably be extremely cathartic. What I really hate is reviewing the middle ground. Games that are okay, but aren't going to rock anyone's face off. Where you just stumble through a perfectly functional, bleary haze for about eight hours, but that's something I'll get back to later. For now, games are art. Just accept it. I don't see what else they can be. There are only two categories of things created by man. Tools and art. Tools have to have a practical purpose, and art does not. And games don't have enough actual physical benefit to be called tools. Well, okay, they have some. You can argue that they develop reflexes and map reading skills if you're trying to talk your mum into buying you a console, <laughs> or if you happen to be a robot. But what sets art apart, art apart, is that while it can have a function, its main intention is to explore human emotion, to make us empathise. Empathy is perhaps more vital to video games than any other medium because no film or book asks you to personally step into the shoes of the main character. And that's what you have to consider when judging whether a game is doing its job properly. If the game is story-based, do I want to see how the story ends? If it's more gameplay-oriented, do I care whether or not I'm playing it well? You can talk about the graphics and the sound and the gameplay mechanics, but eventually you have to step back and boil it down to the overarching question, which is, do I give a toss? Now, I was incredibly bad at Wing Commander. And within minutes of starting the first mission was blasted into a cloud of metal and limbs. Cue a mournful MIDI track and a game over funeral cutscene in which my noble commander gave a stirring eulogy for the great pilot's insert name here. And I actually cried like a child, which was easy because I was one at the time. My brother did let me do the end of it for a while. But why did I care so much about a character of whom all I ever saw was a pair of knees and a hand gripping a joystick? I mean, if a film featured a character that was just a hand and some knees, they'd be difficult to sympathise with. Probably have some trouble getting around, too. And I knew I could just start the game again, have a fresh new life by the right out of the wrapper, but that wouldn't shake the knowledge that a man died because of me. <laughs> that was a genuine emotion bigger than what most movies and TV shows at the time provoked in me. That more recently, I played a game called Age of Conan. I entered the dialogue with some skinny woman in a metal bikini and got to watch her beautifully rendered model stand a round rod stiff as her jaw flapped up and down in time with the dialogue, gently swaying and occasionally doing weird sort of interpreted dance mid-sentence. 